uh, rejoice in the Lord always and Apostle Paul says and again say rejoice the title I have given for today's uh, message is Christmas why we are celebrating Christmas everywhere I praise God for the um, grace God has granted unto us to greet each and every one of you the Christmas seasonal greetings because if Jesus had not come unto this world we would have been perished long back and God has the concern so with that uh, introduction I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ we wish you as a family we wish you to have a, a blessed joyful Christmas to each and every one of you why Christmas is being celebrated? Why do we celebrate Christmas every year monotonously? It is, it, is, it is coming and we are celebrating. What is the difference we make in the society? Since we are the called out people, we are the chosen people, we have to make an impact in the society by the power of the birth of Jesus Christ. Every, every year, it should not be a casual or monotonous. It should be spontaneous. See, everywhere we see hatredness, the wages of sin, and the bitterness, fear, especially fear for nothing, the wickedness, the guilt we see in this world. What is the answer? We are all commissioned by God to be the salt of this earth, to be the light, to illumine the place where darkness dominates. We, don't, we have nothing to do with the dark forces and the satanic influences. We are here to destroy the work of the devil. Jesus has come with a purpose. Why did Jesus come? How to resolve the issues we are facing, insecurities, impossibilities, especially fear. Answer, 1 Timothy 3.16. What is the answer? The mystery of godliness is, God is revealed. The Savior is revealed. God appeared in the form of flesh. That's the mystery of godliness. If we understand the mystery, we will be able to resolve whatever the struggle we face, whatever the challenges we face. God took the form of flesh to visit the humankind. He has visited personally today. Personal visit God has made to see each and every one of us. Why did God come down in the form of flesh? See. There is a purpose. We should understand what the will of God is in his birth. The birth knowledge of Jesus Christ. Jesus, the birth of Jesus has divided the whole history into two. Before Christ and after Christ. So each and everyone who is born in this world has to play a major role to make an impact in the society for the betterment of the people of God and why Jesus came why did Jesus come unto this year why we are celebrating Christmas there are three four reasons there are many reasons I have uh, derived four reasons in a natural way why Jesus came he, he has come to take away the fears from his people fear fear it is cruel it grips the person in many number of times a day. It causes lots of damages. Probably it may it, it leads a person to death, the fear. Fear kept you awake at night. How, how to get rid of such kind of fear? See, this is the way. Luke 130, listening the word of God. God said, what God said, to come out of this fear, God has come down with the message. What is the message? Fear not. The first message he has given through the angels 
to the humanity, broken humanity, fear not, don't be afraid, stop being afraid, fear not. This is the message of Christmas, fear not. Whatever the fear we have in our hearts and minds, it will be eliminated, it will be completely eradicated if we put our faith in the newborn babe Jesus Christ and if we accept Christ Jesus as our personal savior, this fear will be completely removed and we will be freed from all kinds of fear. Fear not. This is the word and uh, the fear control our entire lives fear controls and that's the reason Jesus has come down to be with us as Emmanuel Ma Matthew 123 and God's word has come to the troubled virgin the virgin Mary was already troubled in turmoil lot of affliction she had to face in the society to live as a virgin and the word of God has come to encourage her, come to protect her from all her struggle. She was completely worn out and God wanted to protect her. God wanted to use her mightily to manifest salvation in and through her life. That's how God chose Virgin Mary. There's a special purpose. Mary also found strength in the Lord. Mary also uh, discerned the will of God concerning her life. And uh, he has come down as Im to be with us as Emmanuel. And the word was uh, given to comfort Mary was, Mary, don't be afraid. Mary had a lot of questions. How will this be? How will this be? How I am going to face the consequence? How I am going to live in the society? Lord, what, what is going to happen to me? And with all insecure feelings and impossibilities, God has sent his angels to comfort Mary. My dear friends, if you are going through a lot of turmoil and tribulation, struggle in your society, in, in your life, inter, interpersonal life and intrapersonal life, ask God, invite God to be born in your heart. And definitely God will take control over you. All the fears concerning everything will be completely removed. Mary, the Virgin Mary experienced such things. The message was given to Mary. Mary, don't be afraid. I know you are suffering and reproaches. And you are going through a lot of reproaches. I know you are suffering. I know you are inward struggle. You cannot expose to everyone, any, anyone. It will be carried away. Mary, I know you personally. I knew you, Mary. I have called you by name. I have summoned you by name. I have chosen you before you were formed in your mother's womb. And I have engraved you on my palms. You don't need to worry about anything, Mary. Because you are my chosen one. Don't be afraid. My dear friends, don't be afraid. Whatever the situation may be, don't be afraid. Whatever the challenges you are facing, don't be afraid. Our, our God is with us as Emmanuel. That's the message of Christmas today. And uh, she found favor in the eyes of God. And he finally he said, let's take the word. He said, <coughs> um, uh, according to thy will, let it be done. I am your servant, Lord, according to your will. According to your will, let everything be done in my life. This is a complete surrender. In, as she was going through the tribulation, the reproaches, she found strength in the Lord because she trusted the Lord. And Lord, Lord already has taken care of all her physical and emotional needs and she, has, she, she was comforted by the word of the Lord. Luke 131. Mary, you will conceive and give birth to a son. Mary, the message, is, message, message has come to Mary. The suffered, suffering Mary. Suffered Mary. Mary, you are going to conceive. You will conceive and give birth to a son. That is salvation. You are going to manifest to salvation. No, you are going to have the birth pain. You are going to conceive and give birth to a son. Jesus, 
who saves the people from every sins and trespasses. We don't care. Uh, we, 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 we can call it the term Jesus as set salvation. Mary, I have found you to manifest salvation. In the place of Mary, let's put our own name. So and so, I found you to manifest salvation unto this world, broken world. They don't know what, what to do. That's how Jesus, when he was on the cross in crucifixion, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Mary, I have found, I have found you and you are highly favored, you are highly esteemed and you are going to have a son, you are going to reveal salvation. That's the message. Matthew um, 121, he said he will save his people from sin. Luke 135, the power of the, power of the Most High shall overshadow you. The power of the Most High shall overshadow you. In all your struggle, in all your problems, there is a way to resolve. Because I have chosen you, you have come into my umbrella and I, I have taken care of you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you, Mary. You don't be worried. My dear friends, Worry will cause a lot of damages in the lives of the people, physically and spiritually. We don't need to worry about anything at all. Because if we trust God, we can conquer evil. Jesus has come to remove the fears which is corrupting our system. Which is uh, spoiling our whole image. So trust Jesus. Invite Jesus. Lord, be born in my heart. I am ready, available Lord. Have mercy on me. Forgive all my sins and trespasses. Not only morally, we have to do something for that. Atone, to make atonement. That, that's how Jesus already made an atonement for us. We have to be receptive to receive the atonement. Now, the fear is gone. Overshadow. Mary, the, the um, power of the Most High. We need to have the, we need to be recharged by the power of the Most High. Every now and then. That's how the worship services, the intercessory prayer, the Bible study, the fasting prayer, and, and, and all the other spiritual related activities which is going on. If we are punctual, if we are receptive to the gospel, nothing to worry. We will lose nothing. We will gain everything in the name of Jesus. Whatever the situation may cause. Fear is gone today. Maybe the power of the Most High will overshadow you. That's the secret. To resolve every problem. What is that? According to Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. Will rest and abide in the shadow of the Almighty God. He is a powerful God. He is a transcendence God. He is a sovereign God. If you are find, if, if, we, if we find favor under the umbrella of God, definitely we will be safe. Our fears will be completely wiped away. Our fears, the fear is, fear is causing a lot of struggle in our lives. Let's give away all our fears. Cast all your worries upon the Lord. He will sustain you. He will never suffer the righteous to be moved. I, Psalms 55, 22 and Luke 2, 11 says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. Today, today is the day of salvation. Accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Today in the town of David, Jesus, the Savior, has been born to you. He is being born to you. Not for others. Just, we have to take it in a personal way. He is a personal God. Let the person, we should allow the personal work of Jesus Christ to be seen in our lives. Today, the Savior has been born to you. This Savior has come to you to visit you. Are we visited? Are we yield ourselves to God? 
visitation. Jesus, God the Father had made visitation through Jesus of Nazareth by giving his only begotten son. Joseph was going around and knocking at the door. If, he, if there is any place to have birth in the inn, there is no place for Jesus to be born in the inn. And it, I, I, it came to pass. While they were there, the birth took place. The God of King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He doesn't have a place to stay to be born. My dear friends, he humbled himself. Humility is seen. How are we? What all we enjoy, it is because of God's grace. We have to give glory to God. He has come down to take away the fears from our hearts and minds. Second thing, he has come down to forgive all our sins and trespasses. Our sins are forgiven. For that reason, Jesus came to save the sinners. That's the word of the Lord. Why did Jesus come? We have to understand why Christmas. Not only lights and decoration, not only other things. Why the circumcision of heart is required. We are struggling to overcome the sin and the presence of sin. Several other things are happening. <coughs> He takes away the sins of the godly. And to, he, he has come to break the power of sin. The power of sin is cruel. Power of sin and the effects of sin and the consequences of sin. Power, the sin, the presence of sin is cruel. First John 1 John 1.8 to 10 Jesus Christ is born to forgive sins. Basically, we are all sinners by birth, witnessed, test, witnessed, witnessed by a psalmist recorded in Psalm 51. We are basically, we are sinners, 51.5. And if we know the fact that we are sinners, we automatically we will confess, we will humble ourselves, we will consider others better than ourselves. And we will not have any pride in our hearts and minds which will deteriorate the personal, the other person's personality. And we know that we are, we are taken out of dust. We are formed out of dust. And we are going back to that dust. So if we confess John 8.13, if we confess God is so faithful to forgive all our sins and trespasses, for that reason only, God the Father sent Jesus Christ to save the sinners. We are all sinners and we need forgiveness. We need remission of sins. And Jesus has come with the blessings to forgive all our sins and trespasses. And John 8.34 says, We are sinners. It is a simple fact. Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Bible says, if the Son Jesus Christ makes you free, you shall be free indeed. We want to be free. We want to be, we want to be set free. And Jesus, let's cling unto Jesus. In spite of all the filthiness, all the ugliness of our mind and heart. Let's come back to God, to see the God. God has come to visit us and he has forgiven all our sins and trespasses. 1 Timothy 1.15 says, Jesus came to this world to save sinners and he breaks every yokes and chains caused by the devil. 1 John 3.8 Jesus has come to break every yokes and chains. He has come down to break every stronghold of the devil. We are not able to face the devil but in the spirit we can face the devil by the power of the word of God. And by his birth, the presence of sin, the effects of sin and the consequences of sin, the power of sin is completely abolished, completely demolished by the birth of Jesus Christ. It is there. The, it is deposited. We have to withdraw the privileges by confessing Christ Jesus as our personal Savior. Isaiah 53, it describes how Jesus made uh, atonement for our sins. Isaiah 53 is for our meditation. Here we see how God of history thwarted the wicked plan of King Herod. See, he has come down to forgive our sins. He has come down to break every yokes and chains of the devil. 
Now, how did he do that? Let's look at the um, um, narrative, the Herod, birth narrative of Jesus. Herod, King Herod played a major role. It is mentioned in Matthew chapter 2 verses from 8 to 12. The arrogant man Herod. I call him arrogant man Herod. Inwardly, he wanted to kill the baby Jesus. He wanted to kill the salvation that has been existed in this world. He wanted to kill. As if he is a godly person, he just directs the Maggie, the wise man. You just go and search Jesus and, and worship him and then come back to me so that I can also go and worship the baby Jesus who was born. His lip service is different, his heart service is different. And he has something which is not pleasing in the sight of God. If he is a real worshipper, he would not have done like this. He pretended to see Jesus. And th th therefore, he insisted the wise man to search Jesus. And uh, as, a, as a result of uh, uh, the wise man worshipping Jesus, wise man saw Jesus by the help of the um, star, the early morning star. The, the star led the wise man to the place where Jesus was born. And they saw the great, the early morning star, they rejoiced. And uh, they just uh, started worshipping the Lord, the bought babe. And they have offered themselves and several other precious things. And then while they were coming back, according to the instruction given by King Herod, they were instructed by the angel of the Lord, sent by God. When we are really worshipping the Lord, we will be instructed by God what is right and what is wrong. These many years you have been practicing something else that may be wrong. When you will feel that, when you come into the point of accepting Christ Jesus, coming to the point of encountering Christ Jesus, if we have an association with Jesus, we will come to know what is right and what is wrong. This King Herod, he played in different role, outside one role, inward one, one role. And this uh, innocent, the wise, wise person, root, you have to take another root, don't meet King Herod anymore. Because his intention is not good, he is against salvation, he is talking for salvation, but he is against salvation in his heart. Don't go back to Herod, King Herod. You take another route. And as they, have, as they were instructed, having received the instruction, this Maggi, wise man, they took another route and they went, they went home peacefully, joyfully. My dear friends, when we accept Christ Jesus as our personal Savior, our sins are forgiven. Jesus came into this world to take away all our fears. Don't carry fears anymore. Don't carry sins anymore. Cast all your sins upon the Lord. He is there to bear all your sins. And our sins are forgiven. And Mark 2.10 Son of God has authority to forgive sins. Psalm 32.5 says You forgave my guilt. He testified. Lord you forgave my guilt. And Romans 6.14 by accepting Christ Jesus by his grace, we will overcome sin. The sin will not overrule us. It is written, because you are under grace, sin will not overrule you. Under grace, in the sense, grace comes from Jesus. In the name of Jesus, the more we use the name Jesus, 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 our sins are forgiven. That's the way. And uh, I, sin will be no more. Jesus has come to take away all our fears, to take away all our sins. And then third, Jesus has come to bring fire on this earth. It is recorded in Luke 12, 49. I have come to set fire on this earth and Jesus wished to see the fire kindled. Jesus wants to see the fire kindled. He wants to, he just, yes, he, he came to uh, put fire on this earth, fire from above. And he wants to see the fire kindled. He wants to put fire in our heart and he wants to see the fire heart 
fire kindled in our hearts so that it will touch the neighbor, touch the people around. Deuteronomy 4.24, Hebrews 12.29, our God is a consuming fire. He is not an ordinary God with flesh. He is a consuming fire. He is a man of sorrows filled with grace. But he is a consuming fire. He is a righteous God. We cannot go with the wrong practice what we have. We have to take a right about turn. When we really worshipping Jesus of Nazareth. Our life will have the transformation. Our life will have the changes. So here the consuming fire devours all the filthiness. <coughs> Psalm 53 our God comes. He will not be silent. Fire devours him. Fire devours him. Divorce before him. Fire divorce before him. Fire consumes, swallows before him. Fire goes before him. So this uh, people of Israel, they were led in the wilderness. In the night, they were, they were led by the pillar of fire. Pillar of fire. And during daytime, pillar of cloud. And nighttime, they were led by the pillar of fire. Without pillar of fire, Israelites people, it was impossible for them to be rescued from the hands of the Egyptians. In all the journey of people of Israel, the pillar of fire was seen. First Kings chapter 18, 24 to 38. There was a challenge. <clears throat> when there was a challenge, Eliezer said to the prophet Sabal, there was a challenge. It is recorded in First Kings chapter 18, 24 to 28. 24 to 38. He, he just uh, assembled the Baal prophets. He said to the Baal prophets to call on the name of the Lord. But do not light the fire. He just uh, erect an altar. I will also erect another altar. And you just offer sacrifices on the altar. And the God whom you worship, if he is a real God, if he is a genuine God, don't without any um, human fire let the fire come from above and consume the offering you have brought here to sacrifice that's the challenge <clears throat> without the natural fire let fire from above should come without the artificial fire without uh, setting the fire lighting the fire the fire should come from heaven and the one who caused the fire from fire to come from heaven, he is the Lord. And we will believe he is the Lord. That's the challenge put before Eliza and the 850 prophets of Baal and Asherapoles. The Lord who answers by fire is God. That's the understanding between the two parties. The Lord who answers by fire is the Lord, is God. And we will worship the God. They vigorously, the ball worshippers vigorously shouted, Answer us, ball, answer us, ball. No one answered, no one responded to their who and cry. And afternoon, Eliza repaired the altar. What did Eliza do? Do to bring fire from here because Jesus has already promised you just to be in the uh, upper room. I will send fire. <coughs> I will send my Holy Spirit. So they were waiting and they, they have received the Holy Spirit and Holy Fire. Now the Eliza was asking God, asking, uh, he was telling to the Baal prophets, you just ask God. If he, is, if he responds, we will accept him as our God. The, if, if he responds by fire from above, we will accept him. The God who answers by fire is the God. And they shouted, they shouted. At afternoon, Eliza, what did it? They did not, they failed. The 850 prophets, they failed to bring fire from above. They have failed the challenges, challenge that has been put before them. Now the turn has come to Eliza, major prophet Eliza. And what did he do? He repaired the altar, my dear friends. To bring fire from above unto your family, unto the lives of your household, what you do, you have to repair, you have to make a repair, you have to renovate your household, you have to set right the broken relationship you have. 
with the with your fellow being with your family relatives so elisa what did elisa do to bring fire from above he just repaired the altar and he said he repaired the altar that has been torn down and he named the altar israel and offered sacrifices and said to god and sir me so these people will know that there is god who can answer us by fire let these people who are surrounded let them know that there is god supernatural god who created the human kind that who created heaven and earth let the people know lord i am your servant i am crying unto thy name answer us lord answer us lord god has answered elijah's prayer and he has sent his fire from above the fire has come down from above and consumed all the sacrifices that has been offered by the prophet elijah the challenge was over now so my dear friends instead of asking little little things to god ask god to send his fire on us send his breath of his nostrils that has opened the way for the people of israel in the red sea ask god great attempt great things for god my dear friends this is the way to bring to um, bring fire from above our god has come down to set fire on this earth that he wanted the fire be kindled in our lives and this is the thing yes he answered us by fire and the john the baptist also said in matthew 3:11 i i am baptizing you with water but the one who is coming after me jesus he will baptize you with holy spirit and holy fire have you ever received the holy spirit and holy fire baptism if you are if you if you are filled our life would be would have been different not as we used to talk as we talk like others our life would be completely different with values we will know what is right and what is wrong of course little little things will be forgiven and uh, accept expect something from god lord send your fire on us because god we have we were all taken we have all taken water baptism after the water baptism there is another baptism by jesus christ the holy spirit baptism everyone is required every holy spirit baptism is required for everyone so holy spirit god jesus will baptize you with the holy spirit and holy fire even after holy spirit baptism the holy holy fire baptism is also required we will be filled with fire always fire no filthy things will spoil us and definitely god will take care of us all god has come down to remove all our fears god has come down to forgive all our sins and god has come down to send fire and server prayers by fire and this year 2021 hopefully our prayers will be answered and then finally he has come down to share the everlasting joy to the human kind joy to the world joy to the people around so this this uh, mary um elizabeth and the um, shepherds and the wise men and all the people were given the good news of joy goodness the joy of salvation to the humanity they have imparted the joy of salvation to the humanity because the joy is for the whole world joy to the world we are singing joy to the whole world john 3:16 jesus god the father sent his only son jesus christ to save the whole humanity he loves the people around the world who joy to the world he brings joy to the world he at least we are expected to bring joy to our neighborhood look to 8 to 14 it is there <clears throat> salvation uh, brings joy to the world and then why joy was interested upon <clears throat> upon them they are they are so faithful because these people why 
वही गॉड चोस मेरी हर सिस्टर हु इज द एलिसबेथ and the uh, people who are really working hard day and night to protect the uh, sheep and the flocks the shepherds and the wise men they were really searching god by our by their hearts and they were so faithful in little little things why god imparted his joy unto the people why did god use such people to communicate the joy unto the humanity because they were so faithful in little little things they were so faithful even the shepherd who were tending the flock they were faithfully tending the flock and they were toiling all the hardships to protect and preserve the flock it is written luke 2:9 they see this this is the when we work hard for something to establish the god given law in the society in the structure of the society in the system of the society god helps and these people are toiling day and night with that expected concern concern of god they were faithful in all these things and god the uh, important his glory his joy unto these people and the angel of the lord appeared to shep- shepherd because they were um, protecting or um, they were preserving the flock under whom uh, they were, it was interested and they were so faithful to protect their flock and god sent his angels angel angel appeared to shepherd and they sh- they shine all glory to god sh- glory to god shone around the shepherds as they were terrified the angel of the lord strengthened them with the good news what was the new good news of great joy good news look to leaven today a savior has been born to you my dear shepherds who are all those who are leading the shepherding ministry you are all shepherd because we are the royal priesthood we are accountable for our own household our own children our own family our own grandchildren we are responsible for our household that's how god has made us royal priesthood and we are interested the responsibility to protect and preserve the household immediate relationship and then we are we will be comforted by the holy spirit god send his word joy to the world great there will be great joy of good news the great joy motivated the wise men induced the wise men to make a search of god if we if you are filled with the joy of salvation it will motivate us to step in to see the glory of god and the wise men saw jesus and they were they worshiped jesus today a savior has been born to you that's the goodness of great joy the magi saw and they were filled with exceedingly great joy the moment we 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 see god in the personal level our hearts and minds will be overflowed will be filled with joy swelled with joy the joy of salvation it is incomparable it cannot be controlled by anyone joy of salvation this magi this wise men they were filled with that joy finally they saw jesus and worshiped my dear friends let's invite this joy unto our heart be wise to see god god has sent his only begotten son to remove all our fears from this day on your fears will be removed and god has sent his only son to forgive all your sins your sins are forgiven and again he sent fire on this earth and he wants to he wants to be a he want he wants you to be a blazing fire he is a flaming fire ask god to lord help me lord to fan into flame the gift of god that is in me and you will shine like stars as a flaming fire a consuming fire god has sent god has come down to set fire on this earth and fire on you and he wanted to see the fire kindled in you and finally he wants to share that everlasting joy jesus has come to share that everlasting joy unto the humanity my dear friends let's share the joy to our at least our neighborhood 
May God be with you. May God bless you as you yield yourself unto God. Happy Christmas to you all. God bless you in an abundant way. Amen.